You see the postings all the time. You can't get anything. Okay, round number eight, go around the horn here and check out the mics for the stream. This is mic number one. Hopefully all those sounded good to you uh, through the speakers. I'm going to zoom in and tell me if the camera is mimicking my zooming. Zoom out, zoom in. I get a shot of the TV, the best it can do from this angle. And. Uh, we are all good. I'm going to mute the sound and uh, go from there. Okay? Okay, going to mute the sound. Thank you. the sound in three, two, one.
So if I could have a, oh, just a couple of announcements. If you could silence your cell phones, please. That would be greatly appreciated. And the emergency exit is directly in front of us if we have to leave unexpectedly. Okay, if I could have a motion to approve the agenda for October 11th, please. And a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried. One, two, three, four, five. Motion carried five zero. Okay, if I could have a motion to approve the minutes from September 26th, please. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried five zero. Um, we have a couple student ambassadors with us. If we could start with the middle school and uh, have Owen Hall come up, please. Good evening, Board of Education. I hope everybody's having a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Antonelli, for having us here at Sidway tonight. The middle school would like to have Owen Hall come up and talk a little bit about everything that we have going on at the middle school. Um, hi, uh, my name is Owen Hall, and I'm one of the current multimedia specialists at the middle school for student council. Um, last month, we were able to hold our back to school barbecue, and it was a giant success. We had 386 students attend, which made it our largest school event ever. And our sportswear sale just wrapped up yesterday, and the order should arrive somewhere in November. Um, and we are currently planning to get ready for our Monster Bash event, which we haven't been able to hold in the past because of COVID. But um, everything's looking good so far, and our elections for executive board um, also have begun, and we are excited to see who will sit at executive board this year. It has been great getting back in the swing of things and, hope, and holding all of our normal events this year. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, and moving on to the high school, we have Samuel Jamie with us. Hello. I'm the student ambassador here at the high school. I'm a senior. So, just a couple things that we have going on at the high school. So, the seniors part of is the senior luncheon. Friday, September 30th. It was a great success as the guest speaker of Artist Wisdom of Never Giving Up and Following Your Dreams, a message at for a pivotal point for us seniors at that point in our life as we have plenty of big decisions to make. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly and Mrs. Benelli, for setting the event and organizing the speaker. Next up, we have next up we have a NHS slash DECA fundraiser, the Christmas team Cream fundraiser is underway as both NHS and DECA are participating. So far, they are selling really well, so it will be a great way for students to raise money. Big thanks to Ms. Boutet and Ms. Grayback for NHS and Ms. Boutet and Ms. Chamberlain for DECA for setting up this fundraiser. Last Tuesday, the college fair was a great success as both juniors and seniors got the chance to look at many local colleges. Next year, we need a bigger room. Fall sports are wrapping up and senior nights have been a resounding success. Just to name a few, boys soccer against Ken East on Thursday, the 6th, won their game 3-1. The varsity football team, who has struggled this year, admittedly, pulled through and won their first game against Ken East on Friday, the 7th, for their senior year. The girls varsity team, for soccer, as we speak, are playing their senior game night right now, go Vikings. Regular season for fall sports is coming to a close. So be on the lookout as your Vikings stay on sections and wish them all the best of luck. Right now, high school and Veronica Connor Middle School will team up to host our annual Veterans Day celebration parade on Thursday, November the 10th. U.S. veterans will be honored and recognized for the service at the Lunar Parade in Grand Island at Grand Island High School and Middle School. Veterans from the Grand Island School District, Grand Island American Legion Post 1346, Charles N. Gopper, BFW Post 9242, and members from the Niagara Falls Air Reserve Station are all invited. A brief program will follow featuring a performance by the Grand Island High School Chorus and Band. Breakfast will be served, including pancakes, egg sausage, coffee, and juice. Lastly, our senior class will be hosting a full court fundraiser on Election Day on Tuesday, November 8th. 
Come support our class of 2023 and enjoy full parks and English play. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to correspondence, recognition, and good news, we have John Roth, who is a Grand Island Chamber of Commerce Life Achievement Award recipient. Dr. Graham? Yes, uh, Mr. Roth, I hope you'd be so kind as to come up to the podium just for a brief moment, a little recognition for our board and those watching online. Uh, as you know, Mr. Roth has been a fixture here in Grand Island since August of 1973, when he accepted a position in physical education here at Sydney Elementary School. Since then, Mr. Roth has worked as a teacher, a coach, as our athletic director for 49 years, and he's in his 50th year. Is that correct, John? Yeah. 50 years. That's right. John graduated from Tamanda High School in 1967. He shined as an athlete in high school and, of course, later in college. In high school, he played soccer, basketball, and baseball, and he was enshrined in the Tonawanda uh, Hall of Fame in 2002. In his senior year of high school, John was offered a professional baseball contract with the Pittsburgh Pirates, which he declined. After high school, he attended NCCC, where he was named to the prestigious all-region athlete designation in both basketball and baseball. Additionally, at NCCC, he's been uh, enshrined in their Hall of Fame, and that happened in 1993. Uh, John has led a tremendous career. And one other uh, news of note, uh, back, in, uh, back in the day when uh, he was drafted to the Washington Senators in the seventh round for Major League Baseball, John has you know, decided to commit to the Air Force Reserves that same year. He returned to UB in 72, finished his Bachelor of Science in Phys Ed, and completed his collegiate baseball career there. That same spring, Pirate scout Sal Nagley tried for the third time to get John Roth to sign a contract offering him a spot with the Pittsburgh Pirates AA affiliate. affiliate. Instead, uh, Roth went back and earned his master's degree at Niagara University. John, we are so proud of you. Your career is legendary. Uh, uh, you have done such tremendous work here, not only as a teacher and a coach and a director of our athletics, uh, but also as a mentor to our young people. Uh, your uh, children, uh, Jeff and Julie, both uh, benefited from you and Jean and your love and uh, dedication to them. They both had the opportunity to play Division I tennis at Xavier, uh, where uh, I just, I don't know, I've never heard that, you know, I've never had, met anybody that had two Division I athletes at the same, uh, at the same university. Uh, I know you've served uh, the Western New York community on multiple committees, always looking out for the best of our kids. Um, and, and I know just how proud everybody is uh, of you. 50 years of marriage, uh, multiple awards throughout your career, and now the Chamber of Commerce is saying that you are citizen of the year with a lifetime achievement. And that dinner, I think, is this Thursday? This Thursday. All right. Yeah. John, is there anything you'd like to share with the community or the board? Well, uh, this, this room right here brings back memories. This is where I started. And I remember um, designing something very similar with a big circle so the kids could, you know, sit around the circle. Uh, yeah, this a lot of great memories. I mean, it's been a long journey, but it's really something uh, I really love to do. I like teaching physical education. Um, certainly love coaching. And, um, you know, when I was done with that, uh, the last 29 years uh, as an athletic director, uh, hopefully, I think, uh, I know we improved, you know, our uh, and, and, and again, it wasn't one person. I had teamwork, that's for sure. But we did improve our athletic uh, program, no question about it. And of course, uh, the facilities are just a knockout thanks to the community and also the people sitting up here at the table because uh, you don't pass capital projects and you know, 
that kind of uh, stature without everybody, you know, buying into it. So, no, it's, it, it's been wonderful. Uh, I love it. Blue, blue. I'll tell you a little story, though. Just one real quick. And uh, Tanawana High School. All right, and you know, you're, you're an athlete there. And uh, I had an interview for a phys ed job. Uh, morning of August, whatever. And uh, then I had to take a ride over the bridge. And I came over here. And just down the hallway with uh, Catherine DeVizio, I had a uh, interview as a phys ed teacher here. And um, I got home, waited, I didn't hear anything. Finally, I think it was a day later, two days later, a day later, I heard from Grand Island. I said, oh, no, I says, no way I'm going to go to Grand Island. And my mother says, you are taking the job at Grand Island because they were the first ones that contacted me. You're a big shot, you know, you think you're a big shot at Tanawanda and I never heard from him. So, uh, a day later, I took the job here, and boy, I'll tell you, that's a blessing in disguise. And uh, I'm really happy, and it's been great. Your legacy uh, speaks volumes. Uh, the community, uh, our athletes, everybody that comes down to the new facility is so grateful to your leadership for that. I know that we now have, you know, uh, baseball and other programs that are just so excited for the opportunity just to play on those fields. And yes. that's, that's something I think not only uh, the Western community is benefiting from, but maybe your grandchildren too, very well. Absolutely. Uh, it's a wonderful facility. And I've heard people say, and uh, it's just the best of Western New York right now. And maybe not the most fields, like Niagara Falls has nine turf fields, but to have that kind of facility, all light, they had to be able to play softball and baseball at the same time. Uh, and then to use uh, that multi-purpose field for varsity soccer. And it's a little bit bigger of a field, as you would know, and uh, actually, uh, I know our coaches like playing on it, to be honest with you. So it's, very, it's great to see. So this Thursday, I'll see you at this dinner, and if people are interested, there's still tickets available. I right. can go to the Chamber of Commerce website to get your dinner ticket. Well, sure I, you're great. I appreciate it, and I appreciate all the nice words, and your, your help and recommendation and your support. With, uh, it's something that I never dreamed about. You know, you, you look at different Hall of Fames, you say, oh, yeah, maybe one day you got a shot at getting this Hall of Fame or that one. But, um, this is a total surprise. I'm tired of sharing. So I really appreciate everybody's support. Thank you. Yeah, well deserved. Congratulations.
as the board knows and the community knows, public schools really are the bedrock of our communities and our country. Democracy thrives. Uh, we have educated citizens capable of critical thinking and civil discourse, and it really is our local school boards who ultimately are responsible for student success. It takes a strong school and a strong community uh, to raise our children, and the men and women at this table uh, who served as board trustees are devoted to countless hours of making sure that our schools are helping every child learn and succeed. We are very proud of our board trustees. If we could, let's just give them a nice big round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Graham, and thank you to uh, Jude for the certificates and the Grand Island cookies, and thank you to Mrs. Rossi and the Subway UPK for um, cookies and the cards from Kangaroo and Subway Youth High School and Middle School. Um, we just, I don't have to speak for myself, but I just love being part of this board, love working with all of you, um, and I love uh, being a part of the school community in this way. So thank you so much for um, everyone on our team. I think that um, we have a fantastic board and um, a great group to work together. And thank you to everyone. Ashley, if it's okay, we do have a presentation, right? And if it's okay, if we could have uh, our guests jump up a little bit to do that presentation, because I think this is the week where all of the auditors are going to every school we're meeting. Ruby, would you be so kind as to introduce our guest? Sure. I have Jeremy Smith here. Um, he was actually on site for part of the audit, and they got very tech savvy uh, right at the perfect time of COVID, so we're able to do a lot of upload um, that way, and he is with Watson. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to go over brief PowerPoint presentation, uh, so don't worry, uh, there's a lot of reports. Um, we did meet with your audit committee last week and we went into a significant amount more detail. So I'm going to just keep this high level. Um, so if I do go through something too quick, just please let me know and I will um, answer any questions or comments that you have. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see that all right. But, um, um, so I'm going to go over the audit scope and results. So our main objective is in this first audit report, which basically states that our, our job as auditors is to express an opinion on whether the financial statements are free from material statement. And we have a vision of unmodified, clean opinions. That's the best opinion we can issue as auditors. So good job. Um, there's another audit report in there. Um, we don't express an opinion on this, but this is required by government auditing standards. Um, this basically states that part of the audit process, we work with Ruby in the business office, gain an understanding of your internal controls, your, your cash receipts, this personal payroll cycles, and in order to help design your audit procedures. In doing so, if we come across anything of significance, we require reporting. And we have no matters once again, so good job. Um, the next report is in report, report in accordance with the uniform guidance. Um, this is required, or it used to be called single audit, um, if you have over $750,000 federal awards. So the government requires us to test at least 20% of your federal expenditures. So you have roughly about $5.6 million. We look at your education stabilization fund, which represented 39% of that. That's your uh, CARES, Carissa, American Rescue Plan funds, um, ESSER and GEAR. Um, and once again, no findings, um, good job. Um, the next report, there's an extra classroom um, uh, financial statement as well that we do. Um, now, this just basically has a summary of the clubs and the activity during the year. As you can see, there was a $254,000 in additions this year. Just to put it in perspective, 2021 during COVID, we had about $68,000. Deductions, we had about 76000 So I think we would anticipate a significant amount of activity. On the next couple slides, there's a, a couple additional reports that aren't part of the um, financial statement package. Um, the first one's required communications with you as the board. Um, not going into detail on this one. This is a very standard boilerplate uh, language. Um, you know, we didn't have any issues with management, we didn't have any uncorrected mistakes, so forth. Um, the only thing I want to point out in here, there's also additional, if we have, there's additional wording on here of significant disclosures. Um, the one thing that happened this year for all governmental entities, 
Um, there was a new accounting standard where basically all leases are required on, uh, reported on a balance sheet for your full approval of government by financial statements. And for you guys, that resulted in about a $106,000 adjustment. Not significant once we get into the last page or so to see, but just wanted to point that out. The next report is a management letter. Um, you know, this is where we give the recommendations. Um, we make you alert of any upcoming accounting standards that are coming up. Um, won't go into too much detail here as well since we went over it last uh, last week. But also, some of these want to work with the business office in order to uh, fix or adjust in the next month or so, just to kind of clean up some uh, little things. And now we'll get into some numbers. Um, so right here is, these are basically your fund balance and some of your reserves. So the general fund is the one that goes to the voters um, every year. So overall, we have about $14 million in fund balance. Prior year was about $9.6 million. So we had a $4.3 million surplus this year. So good job. Um, now, you'll see a couple of the reserves that change significantly on here, our debt service reserves. So that's made up of a couple things this year. Um, first, the voters approved to use some of that reserve as part of our budget, about 960000 of it, to offset our debt and principal costs. But we also increased that $3 million um, due to accounting standards in which we completed our capital projects this year. And the accounting standards require us to move any excess um, proceeds, less those expenses over this debt service fund to be used against uh, future debt payments. So that's why it went up uh, $2 million. Um, the next other big increase is the designated for subsequent year. Once again, it's another voter approved uh, amount um, that is to balance next year's budget, so the 22 23. And then you can see here the capital projects fund balance. Last year it was a $13.5 million deficit. It's about $47,000 um, um, positive fund balance this year. So, representing the expense. We transferred out to the general fund at $3 million, but that was offset by uh, bond proceeds that we took out in the current year to finalize the fund that project. Um, the governmental funds that counts as a revenue source, so that's how we got to this um, positive 47. A couple of small projects left out there. Um, other good news uh, food service fund balance, uh, we had an $850,000 deficit in the prior year. We're, up to, we're down to about 85000 so we're getting close to break even. Um, that was primarily due to we had about an extra $850,000 in food service revenues this year, which actually doubled. We're only about usually $760 in 2021. Um, so we had uh, you know, increased meals and increased rates due to there was some additional funding as far as uh, due to COVID by the federal government. Um, so that wiped out a good chunk of that. Next, this is just the general fund revenue. Um, so we're up about a little over about $3.1 million, which is uh, about 5%. Um, property taxes went up 3%, which is about $1.1 million. Um, that was, once again, in our uh, voter approved budget. State aid went up about 1.7, um, which is 9%. Now, a lot of that is due to the state allocation, uh, foundation aid, and so forth. But also, we do get additional aid for that completed project. Um, so that we resulted from building the aid. Um, but we also get aid from uh, transportation services for the expenses as well as OC. So they resulted in this, that increase in state aid. Um, sales tax at Twin Erie County, that went up 500000 so all, that all across Erie County um, as we kind of come back from uh, the COVID years. And then other was down slightly, and that was just due to how we had to code our federal awards. Last year, they reported, required it to be recorded in our general fund. This year, we got separate funds, our special aid and our federal funds for that. So our general fund expenditures also went up about $3 million, or 5%. So sailors and employee benefits, they went up about $1.6 million of, it, of that uh, $3 million. Um, that's due to, we did get a significant amount more education stabilization funds, so we were able to, um, you know, increase our hirings, as well as we have uh, normal wage increases as well as health insurance rates are continues to go up, retirement rates uh, continues to go up. Um, the debt service went up about $1.4 million as well because we had a ban principal payment um, and then we took out the new debt um, from that new bond. And then the other costs, such as services, we had additional um, services 
that we're using that we weren't on during the prior years. And then the last slide, this is uh, converting our short-term basis governmental funds into full bill, let's pretty see your capital assets and other long-term liabilities. Um, basically, your current assets is mostly cash, so we're going to build liquid position. Capital assets, that's this building, equipment, vehicles, so forth. Um, slight increases due to the additional costs from our capital projects in the year. Um, pension OPEP, as you can see, that went up uh, about 3.9 million. That's mostly related to our TRS and DRS systems. We were required to record a proportionate share of that for each district um, in New York State, and they're both actually assets on our books this year. Um, prior year, they're both liabilities, so just an actuarial calculation. And, and then the long-term <coughs> other liabilities, they kind of offset each other because prior year, the ban was reported as an other liability. Now we converted it, paid it off, and made it a bond, and now that's in the long-term liability, so we kind of went off hand in hand. Um, that's all I really had. I, mean, I don't know if anybody has questions. I went through it pretty quick. Jeremy, we've been carrying a deficit in food service for many, many years. Yes. I think on one of the slides you indicated that our deficit is only now 85,000, when it was in the 800,000 dollars. So uh, the federal uh, dollars during COVID for free and reduced meals really helped us correct that yeah. deficit. Yep, yeah, it was uh, over double. It was like a 100% increase. It was, it was pretty large. Uh, yeah, it, it wiped out many, many years of accumulating deficit, so good job. And Ruby, are we going to be advocating to bring back free and reduced uh, or free lunches and breakfasts? Yes. Yes. I said many times if we would have just had one more year, uh, everything would be great. Um, but outside of um, just fixing the fund balance issue, um, we will still be advocating. Thank you very much. And Ruby, I think the next step is this report is published now, right? With the New York State Education Department? Yes. Um, SED will receive a copy, and then we have a couple other agencies uh, that we're required to report to, but SED is first. It's not the right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We did not have anyone sign up for the public comment session. So that brings us to curriculum and instruction. Thank you. Um, there's just one item on the agenda, which is our monthly report for September and curriculum and instruction. So I'm just asking for the board to um, review it for information. There's no question. Okay, thank you. Uh, personnel instructional, if I could have a motion to approve A and B, please. A motion. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, Any objections? And one quick. Um, I'm a employee who I think you got my name as well. We'll make sure that's done before we post it to the uh, website. If it's voted. Okay, um, any abstentions? Okay, motion carried, five, zero. I think we have some introductions. Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Van and District Administrators. Tonight we have one introduction for the high school. Mr. Hughes, if you don't mind standing for a moment. We would like to welcome Mr. Mark Hughes as a long-term substitute in our music department. He will be teaching our high school general music courses as well as working with our middle school for sixth grade band lessons. Mark is a 2013 graduate of Grand Island High School who spoke very fondly of his influences at GIHS that led him to pursue a career in music education. Mark graduated from SUNY Fredonia with a bachelor's degree in music education, Michigan State University with a master's of music and trumpet performance, and he's currently finishing his doctoral degree in musical arts studies at Rutgers University. 
We are excited to welcome Mark back to GIHS, and we're very confident that he's going to have a very positive impact on our students and our music courses. Thank you, Mark. Congratulations. Mr. Roth, I think he was on the football team, too, Mr. Roth. Yes, he was. Nice. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having such an interest in our community. Come back, be a long-term son, uh, while also pursuing your doctorate. So, congratulations. Are there any other introductions? Thank you. Okay, so moving on to personnel and instructional, I have a motion to approve Part B.
And uh, I think our ambassador, Mr. Fitzpatrick, talked about uh, the partnership between you and the high school to recognize your U.S. veterans. Um, so that's Thursday, November 10th. If any of our board members would like to participate, uh, please contact Anna Bruno at the middle school uh, main office to uh, make sure that you're welcome. Uh, I believe there's a little light continental breakfast for our veterans, and then an indoor parade. Uh, John, how many years have we been doing this? It's actually one. Uh, four years, and uh, it's really an amazing event. It is uh, such a great way for our young people to recognize our veterans, and uh, it comes at the most perfect time. I believe the parade goes through the middle school and then finishes at the auditorium, yeah. where there'll be some music performances from the high school uh, students. So really a wonderful event, and if any word ever would like to go, please contact the Anna Bruno. And it was bus safety week, so a lot of our bus drivers worked together with our principals to make sure kids had an opportunity to learn everything uh, they need to learn to be safe on our school buses, and I think our transportation department for that. And of course, I always like to share with the board just some amazing photos, some taken by Larry Austin and the coaches and Mark Gordon. So uh, it's been a, a whirlwind event in October as we celebrate our seniors. You can see our seniors here uh, with our swim team. And uh, I think there was a senior event for our girls soccer today and uh, lots of great ways to celebrate uh, the students who are doing such a good job in our schools. Great. And Jay, I think you have a senior with our cheerleaders, so uh, lots of, uh, it was a fun football game on Friday. Great win, real exciting, um, and we're very proud of them. And we want to also take a look at the fun run at uh, youth. The kids had such a great time to really enjoy themselves, and it was a lot of fun. There was music and running laps. And even a zombie walk, I think, so that was a lot of fun at youth. And as I mentioned, the senior night for our cheerleaders and football players was very special on Friday. And just some photos of some action shots from our boys' soccer. And from Friday night's game, uh, Larry took some great pictures, really exciting uh, football uh, game with the first win of the season. A lot of fun, a lot of celebration. And we've got to recognize our cheerleaders that did a nice job. They invited um, young people from our community to be part of the clinic, which occurred on Thursday. And then the kids got a chance to uh, perform a routine at halftime of the game, so that was pretty special for them. Uh, also, um, our teachers are doing a great job uh, on Twitter. They have a, an account where they're putting a spotlight on our wonderful students. These are some of the students who received that special recognition in our school district uh, directly from our teachers. And then the musical news is junior is coming up. Uh, so hopefully uh, some of our board members will be able to join the cast and crew Friday, October 21st and Saturday, October 22nd. There's a show Friday night at 7, a show Saturday night at 7, and a at 5 o'clock. On the 22nd, so we really encourage everybody to come out to see News and Junior. And uh, just uh, Robin and her IT department have been just reminding parents to make sure to get the Chromebook insurance. I believe they can do that through My School Bucks, and it's $15 for the year. Is that correct, Robin? Thank you. So please don't forget to get your Chromebook insurance. And then I want to thank Sherry for um, talking to us about uh, how we can improve our communication regarding family support services and other mental health services. Right on our website now is a video that is about 14 minutes long. It's right on the front page under things to know at Great Island Schools. So you'll be able to go there and learn more about the services of mental health. And then, of course, you can find more information on our people with personal services. And the last thing that I've been leaving everybody with is just how important it is to, uh, if you see something unusual or uh, unsafe, you can, of course, talk to any of our supervisors or the principals. Uh, 
any of our teachers, any of our, any of our staff will receive information uh, from you if you think something is unsafe for our kids. Uh, and if you're uncomfortable speaking to one of our adults, you can use the liking tip line to communicate, and that goes directly to our principals and a uh, show as well. Does the board have any questions about our current events? Yeah, you mean the parent uh, program that we have? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just uh, looking at the date. Let's see if I have that here. I think you're going to need like a fire or whatever. Oh, like, like just like a fire. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah, I'm sure we'll get something for Jessica or for people services. I don't have it yet. Yeah. But, yeah. Do you want to tell everybody on that date? The date is in Canada. Right? I think November 10th at 6 o'clock. November 10th at 6 o'clock in our auditorium. Cheryl's uh, today and able to be here, but um, Mr. DeMarco is, is our director of athletics, uh, not athletics, our director of phys ed and health, and so he's going to chair the district wellness committee. Prior to that, it was um, one of the nurses who retired, uh, Cindy Sharp. Right. Yeah. So uh, Mr. DeMarco will be reaching out if you're interested and you want to maybe send me an email. And, and actually, if any board member is interested in being on that committee with Mr. DeMarco, the board can send me an email and I'll forward that to Mr. DeMarco. And he'll, he'll have you know, several meetings this year. Usually it culminates in like a wellness fair. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So I, I know that, that that's uh, in the <coughs> Okay, fine. Yeah. So okay, great. So if anyone is interested in Wellness Committee, please send an email to Dr. Graham, anyone on the board, and uh, Mr. DeMarco will be then contacting with dates for that committee meeting. So that brings us to the public comment session. General Ed is not included in the agenda. We did not have anyone sign up for that. And so then committee approval items and information for the round table beginning with Len. Send emails on the weekend, 
Um, you know, there was a lot of that going on, and I, I didn't think a lot during that time, I know I did, um, but you guys never did. Um, anytime I would come to you, um, you would always just kind of talk me off my ledge and say, you know, this is, we're going to get through this, it's going to be fine. Um, so I really appreciate all of your hard work, especially during that, and to see it firsthand. Um, I can appreciate it even more. And then I have three kids in the district, two in the high school and one in um, elementary school, and there have been so many activities in the last month and a half, my head is spinning. And I can't imagine what it looks like from an administrator's side. Um, and you guys do that, you know, for my kids. I make sure that they have the best experience in high school um, so they can look back and say, you know, we really enjoyed it. All the pep rallies and the fun runs and everything they've been doing this last month. And I really appreciate, you know, all the effort you put in so that my kids can enjoy the high school and all the entire experiences. So thank you guys. Julie. I just want to say thank you to the Board of Education for everything that we do for us, for our school district, and our community, and also congratulations to Mr. Draw, who was my uh, ninth grade present teacher. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story behind that. She was the only female in the class. The first day when we first came out, I don't think I was supposed to be here, and I was coming from St. Stephen's, and they're like, oh my gosh. Choose uh, man's name. We say Judith's a man's name, so they put me in with the boys. And I was like, uh, no, I can't become a woman this year. <laughs> so, but, anyways, congratulations, so, Mr. Ralph, and we'll see you on Thursday. All right. Uh, Joy. I love that, thank you. Judy, I don't think it was a mistake putting up the boys. It explains everything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. <up. laughs> Thank you to everyone for more, especially with the board appreciation month. We appreciate you having principles and cherries at the best. I'm just going to second what you said. Thank you. Congrats, John. Uh, thank you to the Board of Education. And just a heads up that the policy committee has reconvened. So we will be, we will have lots of. Uh, going on the upcoming agenda screen to do first read and second read and first full form. Thank you. Um, I just want to make sure to email everyone who is excused this evening. Um, unless we had two excused and we have Danielle excused and Cheryl excused from okay. you. Um, just a few upcoming dates. November 11th is Veterans Day, no school. November 14th is the Board of Education meeting at Hugh Road. And November 23rd to the 25th is Thanksgiving break. Um, I just also want to say congratulations again to Mr. Roth. We are very proud of you. And thank you, Mr. Antonelli, for hosting us uh, this evening here at Sidway. Um, with that, I'd like to ask for, oh, no, sorry, Dr. Graham, I also left you out. I just, go birds. Go bills. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, go anyone. And the bills. Um, so with that, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn the regular board meeting at 8.23 p.m., please. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 5-0. Thank you. Good night, everyone.